Today, I'm going to do a deep dive on Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series to talk about one of the most recognizable characters and one of my favorite characters in Sanderson's entire Cosmere universe. This is going to be a character study on Vin. Kelsier obviously is great as well. I'm probably going to do a character study on him at some point. Let me know if you want to see that. But today, we're focusing all on Vin. Vin's journey from a wary and isolated street urchin in the shadowed alleys of Luther Adele's underbelly to a figure of monumental significance in the fight against oppression and tyranny on Scadriel, not to mention just an incredibly capable and powerful fighter, is one that's incredibly satisfying to witness and very inspirational. Because I too want to become a powerful Mistborn. Her story is not just one of personal growth, but it's a testament to the spirit of those who dare to challenge the status quo. In Vin, Sanderson has created a very complex and relatable character to many, and really the perfect protagonist for Mistborn. Now guys, as I've been doing research for this video and I've been writing the script, I've been using Notion and it's really helped level up my productivity and just keep all my YouTube stuff managed and organized and I've actually been taking a class called Notion for YouTube Creators, Easily Manage Your Creative Projects. And this is so useful for content creators or really anyone that's trying to learn Notion. This class has helped me create an all-in-one content calendar that links my projects to different tasks and assets. And I've even been able to create a customizable database that helps me manage all the YouTube videos that I'm working on. It's honestly a game changer and I'm really excited to use this going forward. Now I found this class on Skillshare Share, the largest online learning community for creatives. It has thousands of classes led by industry pros across design, illustration, productivity, freelance, and so much more. Honestly, it's the best way to invest in yourself and your goals and take your skills or your career to the whole next level. If you don't know where to start with Skillshare, they've designed learning paths, which are these hand-picked classes that are meant to be taken in order because they build upon each other. So they'll bring you from beginner to advanced in no time. And you can find the class I just mentioned under the learning path called Supercharge Your Productivity with Notion. But no matter what skill you're trying to learn or improve, you should do it with Skillshare. And the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure to use the link, get started today, and a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Now, Vin is a complex and gritty character that goes through major development throughout the trilogy, and Vin nails that strong female lead role perfectly, something I feel like very few authors actually do right. Sanderson doesn't strip away her feminine qualities in an attempt to make a basic badass action hero. Vin feels much more real. She has her flaws and challenges, but also those super relatable moments and some epic epic wins that just hit so right, feeling totally earned. But to truly understand Vin, we need to start at the beginning and take a look at her upbringing and those early memories that shaped who she was. She had lived with fear for so long that she had once seen it as something natural, like the ash, the sun, or the ground. Vin's early life is characterized by adversity, loss, and betrayal, themes that deeply influence her worldview and personal growth. Born into a world where the nobility oppress the ska, the peasant class, Vin's childhood is devoid of safety or comfort. She was born to the ska mistress of obligator and former high prelin of the canton of orthodoxy, Tevedian Tekiel. Her mother, a prostitute driven mad and influenced by ruin, murdered her own daughter, Vin's younger sister, by piercing her heart with a bronze pin, before forcefully piercing that into Vin's own ear to give this earring as a gift, proclaiming Vin to be a queen, a punishment for one and a twisted present for another. It's only later that we discover Vin's infant sister was a bronze misting, and Ruin engineered her death, the bronze pin, creating a hemallergic spike, giving Ruin access to speak into Vin's mind and manipulate her into finding and releasing him from his prison. 
the Well of Ascension. Now, the Hemalurgy also gave Vin the allomantic power of her murdered sister. Her allomantic seeking ability became twice as strong as a typical Mistborn or Seeker, enabling her to pierce Copper Clouds, which helped her to locate the hidden Well of Ascension. Now, even though Vin has blocked out the memory of her sister's death, the loss of her sibling has left deep psychological scars. This traumatic event results in Vin's brother Reen raising Vin in the Ska Underworld, living with thieving crews and moving from place to place. However, the protection that he offers comes with its own form of abuse, as Reen frequently reminds Vin that trust is a luxury they cannot afford, and that everyone would leave or betray you, even telling her that one day he would leave her. He'd even be her if she wasn't stealthy enough and taught her to be suspicious and even paranoid and to do whatever it takes for survival. He teaches her that to survive, she needs to make herself indispensable, which makes Vin feel like she needs to provide value to be worthy of friendship, love, and living. It's these early experiences that instill in Vin a profound sense of low self-worth and a survivalist mentality that initially defines her interactions with the world. Her brother had taught her so many things, then had reinforced them by doing what he'd always promised he would, by betraying her himself. It's the only way you'll learn. Anyone will betray you, Vin. Anyone. One day, true to his word, Reen leaves Vin in the hands of Kamen and his crew. However, we later learn that Reen didn't actually leave. He'd been captured by a Steel Inquisitor and died insisting that Vin had starved to death years earlier. So while Reen was not a good person by any means, he did teach Vin to go unnoticed and stay hidden in order to escape the detection of the Steel Ministry, and anyone who might discover she's half noble and turn them in. And this is when Vin realizes that Reen loved her and was trying to protect her. Now, throughout the trilogy, she ends up hearing Reen's voice in her head, advising her not to trust people. But later on, during the Siege of Fadrak City, she discovers that Ruin was the one responsible for these whispers in her head. Ruin had been using her earring as a way to communicate with her, mimicking her brother's voice. The next six months of Vin's life in Kamen's thieving crew reinforces her distrust in others. Her abilities as a Mistborn are initially unknown to her, but she does begin to pick up on a power to influence emotions, but she nicknames this ability her luck. She learns to rely on her instincts and skills to navigate the treacherous dynamics of crew politics, where betrayal can come from any direction. Now, Kamen caught on to her allomantic abilities and saw her as a powerful tool, but at the same time, was fearful that she'd turn against him. Vin unknowingly soothed Kamen's victims and made them more gullible to his scams. He often hit her or whipped her for no reason and didn't even pay her. This part of the story really highlights Vin's resilience resilience and adaptability, but also her deep-seated fear of abandonment and betrayal. When the crew attempts a scam on the Canton of Finance, Vin's allomancy alerts the obligators, putting a Steel Inquisitor on her trail. But thankfully, Kelsier happened to be following Vin and Kamen, and steps in to stop and distract the Inquisitor, allowing her to get away. Now, the only member of Kamen's crew that ever showed any kind of kindness to Vin was a man named Ulef, and worried that the Steel Inquisitor would raid the safe house, Vin asks Ulef to run away with her. Ulef agreed, but then went behind her back and told Kamen. And Kamen beat her mercilessly in a drunken rage, intending to kill Vin. And that's when Kelsier jumps in and saves her life. And meeting Kelsier, the survivor of Hathsin, and his crew is a huge turning point for her as a character. Kelsier recognizes Vin's potential not just as a Mistborn, but as a pivotal figure in his plan to overthrow the final empire. Vin initially is very skeptical of Kelsier and his intentions, paranoid that he's trying to use her in some way. Obviously, due to her past experiences, having taught her to trust no one. However, Kelsier's unwavering belief in her abilities and his genuine care for the Ska begin to erode Vin's ingrained suspicion and self-doubt. Kelsier teaches Vin that she's rare because she is a Ska Mistborn, which means she doesn't have to play by the nobility's rules, and that makes her all the more powerful. 
Now, Kelsier's influence on Vin really can't be overstated. He serves as a mentor, teaching her the ways of the Mistborn, but more importantly, he offers her a glimpse of what it means to have a cause, to believe in something and fight for something greater than oneself. He taught her life isn't just about surviving. Kelsier's belief in Vin, even when she doubts herself and her abilities, plays a significant role in the growth of her character. And under Kelsier's mentorship, Vin learns to master her allomantic powers, unlocking abilities she'd never known she even possessed. But it's not just her physical skills that develop. Vin's time with Kelsier and the crew fosters a sense of belonging and trust that she'd never experienced before. She starts to see herself as part of something greater than survival, an instrument of change in a world that's rife with injustice. Now, found family is one of my favorite tropes in fantasy, and characters like Sazed with his wisdom and kindness, and all the other amazing members of Kelsier's crew, offer Vin a foundation of growth. Not only does she learn to trust Kelsier, but a whole group of people, and this is a lot for Vin to overcome, considering her past. After she's injured at Credit Shaw, she notes that the crew hadn't exploited her weakened state, but had cared for her, each one spending time at her bedside. And this is her beginning to unlearn what Reen taught her. Now, she ends up training really hard to both be a noble imposter and an allomancer, and she's trying to become as skilled as she can as quickly as she can, and at one point even challenges Kelsier. Now, Kelsier notices this quiet strength and intensity in her, thinking, no, this one isn't weak, no matter what she'd have you believe. And when she's sparring with Ham, he also notices this fierceness to Vin. And Vin is aware that she's smaller than her opponents. She's even described as being scrawny or frail, but that just means that her enemies underestimate her. In the Hero of Ages, even the Koloss are surprised with her strength. Vin likes to use her weaknesses. The motif of hiding and staying out of sight plays itself over and over again throughout the series, and it's a learned behavior from her childhood that she's turned into an advantage that's put to good use. Kelsier notes, She always does that, wherever she is. She tries to be as small and unnoticeable as possible. So tense. Vin didn't sit. She crouched. She didn't walk. She prowled. Even when she was sitting in the open, she seemed to be trying to hide. The girl was obviously trying to make herself invisible against the corner of the wall. She seemed so timid, yet he caught a glimmer of determination in her eyes. This child had made an art of making herself seem harmless. Now amidst the chaotic turmoil of Vin's life, Sazed stands as a pillar of stability and trustworthiness, offering her a confidant in the storm. He's been her savior on several occasions, earning Vin's unwavering trust. And I truly love Sazed. He is such a great character. And as part of Kelsier's crew, Sazed introduces Vin to various religions that are stored in his copper mines, and she also goes to him for all kinds of advice. His unshakable calmness serves to soothe Vin, and I really like the relationship they have. I really love how she chooses Sazed to officiate her marriage to Elend later on. Now, Vin's upbringing not only taught her a lot of survival skills, but it also developed her intuition, and this is something that Sazed picks up on during their training. Vin's intelligence is one of intuition, not something to be picked up in in books and scholarly works, and this makes her a very interesting foil to Elend and Sazed. Now, when they're discussing the Deepness, Sazed is surprised at how certain she is about her theory that the Deepness is the same as the Mists. He wonders if she knows anything about proper research techniques, or questioning, or studying, or finding proper answers, but he ends up answering his own question. Of course, she doesn't. She grew up on the streets. She doesn't use research technique. She just uses instinct, and she's usually right. 
Now while Vin does have a strong intuition and intense determinism, she initially lacks self-confidence. And this is why Vin's foray into Luthadel's high society under the guise of Valette Renault is a pivotal chapter in her character arc. This is where Vin begins to build her confidence. And not just in her ability to deceive and manipulate as part of Kelsier's crew's larger plan, but in her capacity to engage with a world beyond the brutality and scarcity of the streets, to make a difference from the inside. Now, when Vin attends her first ball at Keep Venture to establish her identity within Luthadel, she attracts the attention of several young men and declines their offers to dance on account of her inexperience. Now, Vin's dual life as Valette Renault serves as a bridge between the starkly divided worlds of the nobility and the ska. Through these interactions with the nobles, Vin realizes the lines between good and evil, oppressor and oppressed, are not as clear-cut as she once believed. And it's within this nuanced understanding that Vin begins to see the potential for change, not through outright defiance alone, but through the subtler acts of influence and persuasion. Vin confronts the question of who she is beneath the roles that she plays. This self-reflection is crucial to Vin's character development. It allows her to reconcile the different parts of herself, the mistrustful street urchin, the powerful mistborn, and the emerging noblewoman. And in doing so, Vin carves out a unique space for herself. At her first ball, she hides away on the upper balcony, where she could watch the party without being seen. Again, another example of her always trying to hide or be stealthy. And here she finds a quiet area where she feels alone, and ironically, this is where she meets Ellen Venture for the first time. Someone who will make her feel more confident and want to hide less. Vin's relationship with Ellen serves as another significant axis of growth for her character. Ellen challenges Vin's perceptions of the nobility and of herself. Through Ellen, Vin learns that her worth is not tied to her abilities as a mistborn or her role in the crew, but is based on who she is as a person, and she begins to feel like herself when she's around him. For those few moments, she hadn't really been Lady Valette, nor had she been Vin. For that part of her, the timid crew member, was almost as fake as Valette was. No, she had simply been whoever she was. This relationship also underscores the theme of duality in Vin's life, balancing her ska roots with her newfound status among the nobility, and reconciling her distrust of others with her deep desire for connection and acceptance. Now, gradually, she becomes more comfortable in her fake identity, but she's given a sobering reminder of the realities of the final empire. After witnessing a soldier murder a ska kitchen boy simply for begging from a nobleman, now, we see her grow a lot throughout the first book, but her abandonment issues come back when Kelsier sacrifices himself and dies at the end of the final empire. She even hears Reen's voice again, which is actually Ruin, saying, See, I told you he would leave you. I warned you. I promised you. However, after Sazed helps her from imprisonment in the Lord Ruler's palace, instead of abandoning him and escaping, she hears Kelsier's voice whisper in her mind instead of Reen's, telling her that, You still have some things to learn about friendship, Vin. I hope someday you realize what they are. And of course, she goes back to save Sazed. Now, Vin's paranoia that was instilled from her from a young age is something that continues to be part of her. In the second novel, her paranoia shifts from a means of protecting herself to a means of protecting Ellen. And as she and Ellen's relationship progresses, he notices this paranoia more and more, noting that half the time she visited his chambers, she checked underneath his bed and in his closet. The other time she held back, but Ellen often caught her glancing distrustfully toward potential hiding places. And Vin further shows her paranoia when Ellen is holding weekly assemblies. She demands that he has both guards in front of the stage rather than behind it. And she actually seems to be self-aware and even grateful for her paranoia. Some called her paranoid. She thought herself prepared. Either way, the habit had saved her life on numerous occasions. 
Her protectiveness towards Elend adds fuel to her fierce fire of determinism. A great example of this is when she's trying to save Elend from being assassinated by Shan Alariel. Not even an enormous stained glass window will stop her from saving him, as she flares steel and shatters the glass. And of course, this scene is made even stronger by Vin's realization that she loves Ellen. To be honest, I feel like Vin's trust issues resulting in overprotectiveness once she does finally trust someone is a very realistic quality to her character. It can be frustrating at times, but it is realistic. Now, Vin's love for Ellen kind of clashes with her main mission to defeat the Lord Ruler. Their strategy to incite a house war involves targeting Luthadel's powerful house venture, which is Ellen's family. And despite being conflicted on this, Vin understands why it's necessary, especially at this time when she's haunted by witnessing several of the Lord Ruler's executions in the town square of Luthadel. Now, Vin holds on to hope that since Ellen doesn't like his father or their house, that maybe she can avoid hurting him. And she even believes in a possibility that House Venture can be spared. Now, by the second book, The Well of Ascension, Vin and Ellen's relationship is official, but they have some conflict right from the beginning. Vin rejects Ellen's marriage proposal. She's afraid that Ellen fell in love with Villette, not her. And it's around this time where she stops wearing dresses, as she's having this inner battle between her different personas. And then Ellen becoming the ruler of Luthadel puts a lot more strain on their relationship, as Vin misses that disheveled, bookish boy that he was. And when the assembly votes against him, there's even a part of Vin that's happy, wishing for him to go back to who he was and to run away together. But then when Ellen begins to stand up for what he believes in, Vin realizes it's these morals and principles and genuine sincerity that separates him from Kelsier, and what makes him a better man. Kelsier would slaughter people without guilt or concern, simply because they upheld the final empire or they worked for the Lord Ruler. Despite this though, Vin still loved Kelsier as a teacher and as a friend, and in a way, the father that she never had. Ellen is much more sincere and a man of peace, and this is when Vin realizes he is still the same man she fell in love with. Now, when it's discovered there's an imposter among the crew in the Will of Ascension, this is the ultimate test of trust for Vin. We see how much she's grown when she holds back on testing to see if Ellen is the imposter. Instead, she decides to trust in him, because she values their love over her trust issues. Later on, Vin also learns a lesson in empathy when dealing with Orsur. She initially has prejudice against the Chandra for, you know, the, them eating human bodies and all, and also the fact that he ate Kelsier. She has a very hard time accepting that, which is why she gets Orsur to take up the body of a wolfhound instead. But she begins to relate with Orsur when seeing the resentment in his eyes for his captivity and being commanded around. And she has a moment of personal growth when she realizes she's only treated Orsur poorly since she's known him. And it's this kind of self-reflection that shows Vin has a lot of depth, and she's quite good at empathizing and putting herself in someone else's shoes. She realized that while everyone in the crew has their own freedom and relationships, the only thing Orsur had gained from overthrowing the final empire was another master, and one who hated him. This makes her remember what Kelsier told her about friendship, and she ends up forming a bond with Orsur, and treating him much better. Of course, it's later revealed that Orsur was the house venture Chandra all along. Now, Tensoon had killed Orsur and taken over his likeness, imitating the Chandra on Zane's command. But he later turns on Zane because of Vin's kindness and empathy. And this leads me to talk about Zane. Ellen was the one she wanted to be with. He represented peace, happiness. On the other hand, Zane represented what she felt she had to become for the good of everyone involved. Vin's encounter with Zane, the illegitimate son of Straff Venture, and a Mistborn like herself, adds a lot of complexity to her character arc and her relationship with Ellen. She's intrigued by this mysterious Mistborn in the mist who manages to slip away from her whenever she gives chase, and Zane represents a reflection of what Vin might have become if she had allowed her power and her past to consume her. Zane is also 
also half ska, and he also has a hemallergic spike letting him hear the destructive whispers of ruin, which makes him very unstable. We know from the beginning that Zane is obsessed with Vin. He protects her from Set's assassins, and he refuses to kill her. We also know that he claims to want to free her, and that he thinks she can, in turn, save him. But his claim of wanting to free Vin from manipulation is a lie. He wants control over her, he wants to possess her, and he tricks Vin into thinking that Set sent assassins to kill Ellen, and he specifically keeps telling her that Ellen is using her and doesn't actually love her. And he misleads her into thinking the scars on his wrists are from the pits of Hathsin, in order to forge some type of connection with Kelsier in her mind. He is deliberately gaslighting her at every turn, using her trust issues and trauma in order to trap her in this fake reality where he's the only one that she can depend upon. Honestly, Zane is like the ultimate toxic boyfriend, and he helps unleash the true monster of Vin's power by getting her to attack Set's army. It's in this moment that Vin chooses to act like Kelsier, helping Zane to brutally slaughter most of Set's army. However, afterwards, she shows that she's different from Kelsier, and describes the massacre as being like a child in a room full of bugs. She's clearly very disturbed by the sheer death and destruction that she caused. Zane embodies the path of chaos and self-interest. He urges Vin to reject the bonds that she's formed with Ellen, Kelsier's crew, and the larger cause that they represent, suggesting they're all chains that are holding her back from realizing her true potential as a Mistborn. And this confrontation forces Vin to reflect on the nature of freedom and the cost of power, challenging her to redefine what it means to be strong. And later on, when she confronts Zane for trying to drive a wedge between her and Ellen, Zane says that he was using her, and to this, Vin says, Yes, but it doesn't matter. Not the way you made it seem. Ellen uses me. Kelsier used me. We use each other for love, for support, for trust. This is a major turning point in Vin's character arc. She learns that part of trust is leaning on each other and using one another when we need it most. Ultimately, she chooses Ellen over Zane, and we know how it ends with her killing Zane. Now, originally, I hated Zane on my first read through. I thought he was a useless pawn for a forced love triangle, and I didn't really get the point. But I've come to realize how he was the perfect villain for Vin, and he played a big role in her overall growth. Now, Kelsier's shadow looms over Vin and the rest of the crew long after his martyrdom. There's a lot that Vin learned from him. After all, Kelsier had given her a sense of protection, and when Ellen asked her who watches over her in the beginning of the Well of Ascension, Vin's immediate reaction is Kelsier. She notes that although she'd known him for less than a year, that year had been the first time in her life when she had felt protected. And also, as she's misjumping around, she notes how grateful she is for the freedom that Kelsier gave her, and how soaring through the mist never loses that intoxicating sense of wonder. At one point, she thinks to herself, Kelsier had taken that fear away. She was still careful, but she didn't feel a constant sense of terror. The survivor had given her a life where the one she loved didn't beat her, had shown her something better than fear trust. And ultimately, trust is one of the major themes around Kelsier and what Vin learns from him. She also notes how Kelsier made good people into better people by inspiring them and having faith in them. He also taught her about strategic thinking and how to break down incredibly large tasks into manageable pieces. And she keeps this lesson in mind when discovering that the deepness, or rather ruin, acts more like a person than a force. And she exploits this weakness weakness by tricking Ruin about the Atium cash and preventing him from getting a hold of it. But one of the main lessons that Vin comes to realize throughout the series is that she doesn't need to always be like Kelsier. In fact, there's times where she shouldn't. After she saves Breeze from the archers that were chasing him as he returns to Luthadel, she has a moment where she thinks that she should kill all the archers even though she already saved Breeze, thinking this is what Kelsier would do. 
However, she reminds herself that she isn't Kelsier and that delaying the riders for long enough for Breeze to escape was enough. She doesn't need to shed unnecessary blood. Kelsier had a major impact on Vin throughout the whole series, and by the end of the trilogy, Vin has grown and become similar to him in all of his positive traits, but she ultimately decides that she can be something better than Kelsier. Now, by book three, her and Ellen have also grown a lot, and they deeply understand each other. And why don't we briefly go over some of the events at the end of book three. When Marsh removes Vin's earring, she draws in the true power of the mist, which is preservation's power. And this is when we get the incredible scene of her taking up a slice of divinity and battling ruin, starting by clearing the air by blocking the ash mounts. Meanwhile, Elend and his soldiers swallow Atium, intending to use it all up as they discover that Atium is Ruin's body. They go and fight the army of Kolos, Elend fights Marsh, and as he's dying but victorious, Marsh beheads him, and Vin sees Ellen die. And she actually feels peace in this moment, and she attacks Ruin, sacrificing herself to kill a god of destruction, and to be at peace together with Ellen. She reflects on how the last few years had been a blessing and an extension of their relationship together, and respects that it was Ellen's decision to die a hero. And then of course, Sezid was watching the whole fight, and he sees Vin's body appear next to Ellen's, as well as the body of a stranger, which is Ruin, or Ati. White Mist is leaking from Vin, and black smoke is leaking from Ruin, and then Sezid takes all of his knowledge from the copper mines, taking the powers of Ruin and preservation, and joining them together to become harmony. A man who had lost his faith in religion becomes a god. He restores the world and the people and watches over Scadriel. And at the end of it all, when Spook, Breeze, and the others awake and exit a cavern, they find grass and a blue sky, and Vin and Ellen's bodies resting in a field of flowers. This was one of the most mind-blowing endings I have read, and it was extremely emotional to see this ending to Vin and Ellen, but it was beautiful at the same time. Vin began at very humble beginnings, then she ended with taking a slice of divinity and sacrificing herself for the entire world. And of course, Vin wouldn't be who she is. She wouldn't have been able to do all of that without the help of Ellen, Sazed, Kelsier, and the rest of the crew. She's one of the most memorable characters in the Cosmere. Now, like I said, there was a lot of stuff going on in her character arc. I most likely missed some things, so make sure to let me know in the comments. This was a very difficult video to put together. Now, for all those Cosmere fans out there, I just started a new series on the channel called Cosmere Classified, and I spent ages working on the first episode Episode going over the origin story of the Cosmere. Honestly, I feel like it's one of the best videos I've made, and I want to make many more of these Cosmere Classified videos, but unfortunately, it's just not really performing that well. So if you can check out that video, that would be amazing. I eventually want to cover all of the Cosmere lore and just make a huge series so that people can keep track of all the details. And that is my character study of Vin. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments. Also, let me know if you want to see more of these characters studies. Maybe you want to see them on some other Mistborn characters or some Stormlight Archive characters. Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, if you want to help support the channel even more, then you can join my Patreon. All the support on there helps me out so much to make these videos, and I'm also trying to put up some more exclusive content on there recently and early sneak peeks. Huge thank you to all my patrons.